Uh, when did World War II start? Um, some will view and contend that World War II started in 1931. What happened in 1931, if you recall, uh, 1931 was when uh, Japan attacked Manchuria and nothing was done. League of Nations, after a two-year investigation, uh, you know, put down economic sanctions on Japan and they were like, forget you, we're leaving. And they uh, withdrew from the League of Nations and then Hitler is able to really do what he wanted in the 30s and take over as much land as possible because of appeasement, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So we talk about Germany and Italy. They formed the Rome-Berlin Axis in 1936, and a month later, Japan joins in, and they call that the Tripartite Pact. These three made a pact that if another country attacked any one of them, that they would, the other two would step in and get involved. So these are the three musketeers of the Axis powers. And um, just again to remind you, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Munich Pact because that was missed pretty frequently on our last test. Um, Nivelle Chamberlain pretty much will um, formulate his whole cr political career on appeasement. And he's going to talk about how he's going to create, have, you know, peace in our time because he knew that the British were not willing and were not ready to fight Hitler in the late you know, mid to late thirties. And so he meets with him and Hitler's going to promise that he won't take any more land from Czechoslovakia after the Sudetenland. And they, he, you know, that is the Munich pact. And this is a reaction of someone when uh, the troops march into to the Sudetenland and Chamberlain again, talks about this piece of paper. He's made this pact. He's created it. He's, he said it peace in our time, but really what he was doing and what had been done, as you know, is appeasement, just giving in to Hitler for one more thing. And it really, truly never stops. His demands don't stop. Uh, the United States is really not concerned. And if you're interested, there's a lot of uh, Dr. Seuss cartoons on um, World War II. The U.S. is not concerned. It will take really almost an at attack from another nation for the United States to get involved. And Hitler does take control of all of Czechoslovakia. And he pretty much bold-faced lies to Nivelle Chamberlain. And then Nivelle Chamberlain looks like a, an idiot and his political career is, is pretty much done. So um, Hitler's plan um, was to defeat the countries in the East and then go and defeat the Soviet Union. He said, very specifically wrote in his book, Mein Kampf, that's where the largest concentrations, concentration of Jews were in the world. And he planned on providing living SRAM or living space for the German people. And to do so, he would take over the Soviet Union. He said that. No one, no one paid attention. I read the book. People would get it for like their wedding gifts, but nobody even read it because it was written so horribly. So to just focus on the West, uh, he signs this non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union was really, you know, being courted by Britain and France to sign an alliance. But he truly went with the Soviet Union because they, he thought that he would get more land and that would protect him from another invasion. So they, the two of them were going to split up Poland. And again, lots of interesting cartoons at the time. Wonder how long the honeymoon will last. Uh, these two are in cahoots. Um, but obviously, uh, Stalin's going to be had here. So after the, and you know all of this, the attack on Poland, um, it will take some time before anything really happens. Uh, you will see the German Air Force is in full force. And the Soviet Union will keep up their end of the bargain and will take up their part and attack their part of Poland. But really nothing happens. It's almost like Britain and France, why didn't you attack? Uh, they, they, again, were very fearful. Uh, the German army was very strong and they were just waiting for Hitler to do something. And again, you've seen this list before all of these things happen. I want to spend some time talking a little bit about Dunkirk which was not a, um, a battle that you had on your list. Um, and really, if you get a chance to watch Dunkirk movie, really great movie, very interesting. But what happens is these soldiers are fleeing for their lives because of the German war machine, and they need to get the heck out of France as fast as possible. So Winston Churchill, rising politician, take over after Nouvelle Chamberlain, he's going to really get the British people, private boats, anybody that can possibly help transport these 
uh, soldiers across the channel before the Germans take over. So you see the German advance is going to be very successful, especially like the end of May and June. France will officially be taken over in June 1940, and they're, they're advancing towards Dunkirk. So they have to get these soldiers across the channel. <coughs> You will see all of these soldiers lined up, ready to go and to try to get out of France before Hitler comes. So they're going to be stacked in boats. Um, not all of them will make it, but most of them will. This is obviously a picture of mass chaos there. But they are going to get out, in most of them in time. But Germany will defeat France, as most of you know. And the German war machine, at least in Western Europe, is very successful there's one country that is left though that is great britain they were able to retreat you know hundreds of thousands of soldiers but they're still you know in the war and there's a picture of winston churchill who will take over and really has almost like a godly status in british society for his work during world war ii so hitler will target england the first thing he's going to do is He's got to get the all of the supplies that the Americans are sending to the British to stop. They have to su stop the supply line. And that really is the basis for the, the Battle of the Atlantic. And you will see how for so long uh, many ships are going to be sunk. And who is going to replenish those ships? But the women working in factories. So you think of Rosie the Riveter. This is a really a, a good example of what women did they were making ships and they're going to be sent right back out so eventually this will this battle be won by the allies so this battle of britain really is battle of air forces and you're going to see so many of the civilians are going to uh, really bear the brunt of this attack so if you look at some of these images from that uh, people would spend their nights in bomb shelters subway stations because you know the german air force was bombing the heck out of them and Hitler doesn't win. Nobody really wins, I guess. If you if you think the Germans were attacking, they couldn't defeat Britain. So I guess you could say Britain won. But Hitler kind of stops and says, okay, I can't wait anymore. I can't deal with that. And he then will go on his attack to the Soviet Union. Now, if you think about the Soviet Union and Stalin, um, Stalin's going to make, and this is a command, but they're fighting for home base. They're going to do whatever they can civilians are going to fight and they're going to suffer and many of them are going to die uh, for their homeland they're going to suffer huge losses they're going to burn things when they retreat millions of russians will die and then shortly after this after stalin is completely stunned that hitler would attack him and he now has realized the non-aggression pact was completely phony and he had been had he will form an alliance with britain uh, the U.S.'s role in the war in England is very key as far as like the Lend-Lease Act. The U.S. is going to loan war materials to any nation at war. We're going to give $50 billion in aid. More than half of that, obviously, is going to go to England. Here's a picture of Winston Churchill and Franklin Roosevelt. They're talking about what the war is going to be like after it's over, like what society going to be like, I guess I should say. Um, they're going to talk about the United Nations. Who had that idea initially? It is Woodrow Wilson. It's essentially the same thing as a League of Nations, but they're talking about this when the U.S. is supposed to be neutral, and they clearly were, were not. If you look at the aid, the Soviet Union, the Soviet soldier will be fighting in Stalingrad. They are going to win. There's a strong argument that can be made that the Soviet Union and its soldiers defeated Hitler. Uh, they're going to be doing it, though, with American supplies, American weapons. So uh, the U.S. is going to spend a lot of money to help the Allies, and the U.S. will continue after the war to spend money to promote the spread of democracy. Uh, U.S. will fight, or the Allies will fight in North Africa and in Sicily. If you see a picture here of, of Mussolini's body after it had been drugged through the streets, uh, this is going to make Stalin mad, though, because with the Battle of Sicily, the Italian campaign, and the Battle of North Africa, it is not enough to really make Hitler fight a two-front war. Some troops are diverted, yes, but it's not enough. They are waiting and waiting patiently for D-Day, uh, which happens, you know, U.S. declared war, joined the war December 8th, 1941. Two and a half year, years later, it's not enough. It was the largest amphibious invasion in 
world history and it is successful, but for Stalin and his paranoid mind, it's not going to be enough. Uh, the last offensive was the Battle of the Bulge for the Germans. There was a bulge in the line. Again, it could have been a flank and then the U.S. soldiers would have been encircled, but that did not happen. And the war in Europe will end in 1945, May 8th. Going on to talk a little bit about the war in the Pacific, uh, the United States and Japan are definitely on a collision course, and it happens way before Pearl Harbor. The big thing for Japan is that when the United States, because of their activities in China, put a ban on oil and scrap metal that crippled the Japanese war machine, they had about 18 months left of uh, oil reserves or else they couldn't do anything. So when the U.S. doesn't um, get rid of this freeze and this ban, that's when they plan the attack. And the attack was successful, but it certainly wasn't as successful as they hoped. They wanted to destroy the aircraft carriers and fuel reserves, which they were not able to do. A lot of the aircraft carriers were gone. They did not get the fuel reserves. But nevertheless, it was immediately successful. A lot of these ships are really just sitting ducks, and they caused a lot of damage. They thought that many people in the United States would just be so frightened and afraid. These images were not shared or published for years after because they feared just how the American public would react to this. And the American public is going to want to do whatever they can to fight. So a lot of damage. Uh, if you look at the U.S. Arizona, uh, this ship will capsize. Nearly 1,200 people died. Sailors on this ship, they were sleeping, many of them. And uh, this is how, you know, the ship still sits today. Some family members have asked for the bodies to be recovered if possible. And that has happened. But there's many bodies, obviously, that are still buried underneath there. And this uh, ship also still, I know it's hard to see here, still will leak uh, many gallons of oil every day. And this is on top of this ship was the the Pearl Harbor Memorial was built. So this is kind of interesting because the United States, very isolationist, even though they were financially helping the Allies, uh, they declared war on Japan. But two days later, Germany and Italy declared war on the U.S. According to the specific details of the tripartite pact, Japan was not attacked by the U.S. It was the opposite. So not sure if Germany and Italy would not have declared war if the U.S. would have gotten involved even in the European theater at this time. But after the U.S. does declare war on the other two nations, the number one priority for the U.S. will be the European theater. It will be Germany and Italy. So um, by 1942, Japan pretty much controlled uh, much of Southeast Asia. They were doing, you know, they were attacking many islands and being very successful, focusing on German, I'm sorry, British possessions. Uh, another just quick side note, uh, what the U.S., what they do to U.S. prisoners of war so if you surrender and you said, I'm not fighting anymore, uh, they will make uh, these soldiers go on a very long march or they'll beat them, uh, hurt them, deny water. And that is just a really a rallying point for the United States. So some turning points. Uh, first one is Battle of Coral Sea, which you should know a little bit about. But this really stops uh, the Japanese advance uh, going towards Australia. And it's also like one of the first times the U.S. can say, hey, we've actually, we've actually tried to stop. Turning point is the Battle of Midway. Um, really, whoever controls Midway controls the Pacific. U.S. had broken the Japanese code, um, and the U.S. really was prepared for this attack of the Battle of Midway. So if you look at its location, Midway between Hawaii and Japan, U.S. was able to sink four Japanese aircraft carriers, and that seems to signal the way that the U.S. is on the offensive uh, going towards Japan. Another turning point in the Battle of the Pacific or the war in the Pacific, is when the United States will island hop, uh, taking control really of strategic islands, trying to cut off the supplies, and really not going to every island, but focusing on the more important ones as they're trying to make their way to the Japanese mainland. That last battle will be the Battle of Okinawa, and they are very close to the Japanese mainland, and they have to decide uh, really what is going to be their best strategy to defeat the Japanese. And Japan will be defeated. As many of you know, the two atomic drop bombs were dropped on Japan, and they will uh, sign the surrender September 2nd, 1945, and that is the end of World War II.